Hey guys, thanks for watching Puppet Master FPV. Um, I'm going to do this video about a bunch of stuff, so this is kind of just going to be a big mix. But this is a special time for me because I have all four of my five inch quads. Let me get one off the rack here in perfect working order. Everything is dialed in, ready to rip from the Theory XL, my only ready to fly. Um, it's got Betaflight 3.2.3 and it has been, I upped my rates, um, pretty much feel like I could do anything with this quad. It has a really nice uh, 800 TVL CMOS camera on it that is really excellent. It's better than these CCD cameras even. Which makes up for part of the fact that this is running one shot. It's got ancient ESCs on it and that's what it runs. One shot 125. Then we go up to um, Floss 2 5.5 inch frame uh, build. So it's going to be a little bit longer than my Floss 2 that's only a 5 inch build. If I compare, if I slide these up, you can see oh, that's just a little bit longer. And that actually does make a big difference in the disc unloading, which I'll get into a little bit later. But um, this is one of my, it, not one of my, probably my the best performing quad all around. Uh, the 5.5 inch to me is the superior, is my favorite frame size on the Floss 2. Um, it has Hyperlite 2205 2600 kV motors, which are just a little underpowered for what I like, but they do work well. I just have to, uh, for a lot of my maneuvers and the way I like to fly, I need that instant punch out that will save the quad even with the weight of the battery and GoPro. And with this quad, because of the little bit of underpowered motors, it requires a little bit more forward thinking and planning in doing maneuvers uh, and not crashing. So that's just one of those things where um, you have to change your style of flying. But this is my, my favorite all around because it's running. Uh, it's, got, it's my only one that's got um, BL Heli 32 ESCs, and it's also running D-Shot 1200. And it really makes a difference. Um, the the locked in performance of it and the features also has Betaflight OSD, uh, custom Brain 3D 30 degree mount. In fact, all of my quads, if you notice, they all have Brain 3D mounts. I really like the couches; those are my favorite. And you just what you do is you buy. You can only need to buy one, but you could buy a bunch to have a bunch of different colors. I'm going to pick up a couple more just so I have alternating colors, one to match the yellow and one to match the purple. But um, this thing protects your GoPro unbelievably. And then it just sits on a couch with a strap. It's really nice. And if you want to see the other style that they make, Brain 3D, on my Theory XL, I have the um, just the GoPro mount universal. You can strap basically on anything. You just get a zip tie and zip it through like I did here. And this is a 35-degree angle. Um, works very well and also, again, protects the session unbelievably well. So we got the Theory XL. We got the Lumineer Alpha Stack. Um, this one also I really like because it's running the stubby axial antenna. If you look at that thing, it's so micro. <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, and then on my Theory XL, I'm just running a standard Spectrum uh, right-hand circular polarized antenna that comes with it. Everything's stock on this, except for the props. Uh, on this one, I'm running Cyclone, uh, older style actually, the 5046Cs, which are one of my favorite all-time all props. So. Um, and then let's move up to the, the other two 5-inch mm, quads that are dialed in. Uh, first, we'll take a look at, this is just the 5-inch floss. This one was out of commission for a little while because it didn't have a video system in it. Um, but I recently got a CMOS uh, Lumineer. Let's see if you can get in there and see that. Lumineer CMOS. This is a 1200 TVL, the highest resolution camera I have. 
Um, and I did just try to put on the Runcam 2.1 millimeter lens I had. It worked, but I didn't like it as much as I did the stock lens. Go figure. So the stock lens is back on. And that is a 2.8 millimeter, I think. Yeah. So we're going to order another 2.1 or 1.8 millimeter, but we're going to get the Foxier brand because I think that does make a difference. You, they will work on each other, but they won't work well. That's what I'm kind of finding. Uh, although... Oh, oh, and then on this one, we're running a uh, Triumph Stubby right-hand circular polarized. I got my, I really like how my receiver antennas are up on this one. This one, I'll really confidently fly um, to ridiculous ranges because of the way it's set up. The antennas are off the frame and separated as far as possible and then bent in a proper way that I just get really good range with this. Um, and then also on this one, we are running the same motors that we we're running on the Theory XL 2206 2450 kV motors. They are, even though they're lower kV, they are a bigger motor from a 2205 or 2206, and they have considerably more punch than these ones, even though these are 2600 kV. And these are good motors, there's plenty of juice in them, but these are mm, closer to like uh, 2306. Um, in the way they feel on punch, they just they're not that strong as we're going to get to my next quad, which has the biggest motors on it. But for the light frame of the floss, uh, even with a GoPro up there, it's just you get ridiculous amounts of thrust uh, from these motors. It's a real nice setup a light frame, powerful motors, and um, and a super uh, good camera. And, oh, yeah, and we also have a Lumineer. 600 milliwatt VTX running here, custom GoPro. This one is the 40 degrees, so you definitely don't see. Um, you can compare these two. See, there's the 40, and then the 30, it's like not much difference. Pretty interesting. So then we have. Our final quad is, and this one I'm actually really happy and excited about. They got uh, it's back up in action, and um, not only that, but it, I have put in the 2.1 millimeter lens run cam. This is an original um, Foxier HSS 1177, whatever the the standard for years in FPV camera that has just recently, I think, been ups, uh, upsetted. Or, um, you know, the the top camera's spot was taken by the run, Swift 2. Swift and Swift 2, and then um, all these micro cams have come out, and those have really kind of sh uh, taken us by storm. But um, this still is like, it just looks so good in this. This is the X hover. This is a really neat frame. Um, I have two flosses. I have a Theory XL frame, and then I have this one. This is the X Hover Win 5. Um, and it's probably the least spacious out of all of my frames. Um, and of course, I have the biggest crap loaded into it, too. I have a Bolt, Race Flight Bolt, and Race Flight Revolt uh, V3s uh, in there. And then I have a, again, a switchable. I think this one is yeah this is the fox ear switcher on this one i got an amway switcher this has a fox ear switcher and this has a lumineer 600 just a regular 600 milliwatt vtx and then on theory xl they give you their spectrum 200 milliwatt vtx which is the worst one on planet earth because you have to press a fucking button to get it to turn on every time you turn you plug in a pack the dumbest thing they ever did so but anyways this is the one reason I hate flying that quad, because you have to fucking push a button to get the video to turn on every time. I don't fly with anyone. That feature was just nothing but retardation for me. But, okay, back to the point. My most powerful and kind of, in a lot of ways, becoming my favorite quad. Um, it just so happens to be a race flight quad. Uh, but this has been an exceptional quad for me. Um, I put my beefiest motors on here. I, we have Emacs. Uh, these fame, these new motors that I really think, <laughs> you know, Johnny FPV, his motors are basically modeled right after these, 
they, they are these motors with a with a with, with just a Lumineer um, sticker on them and whatever. These are 2306, 2750 kV motors. I think Johnny's motors are 2306, 2700 kV. So basically the same motor. Uh, I'm not making that up. That's, this is just fact. So, um, yeah, so we got that. Oh my God, is that coming off? Oh no, it's not. Okay. I wired the wires interestingly on this one. Oh, and I lost one of my caps. I had two caps coming off the top here. I lost one, but really I haven't, I noticed no difference because um, I'm running beta flight on it. Um, just, there's, I've had too many problems with the race flight firmware. So I run beta flight, AKA. -AK. Uh, oh, except for this one, which that was the one thing I did extra want to tell you guys about that. This one I've been running 16K, 16K, and I'm testing out there. There's like a 10.5K uh, gyro and pid loop you can run. So I'm just testing that out uh, a couple iterations, a couple pack runs. But I'll probably go back up to 16K, 16K. It was really locked in for me there. Um, I had no issues. But um, yeah, back to the race flight quad. We got uh, these big, juicy, beefy 2700 kV motors. On everything, we're running spectrum telemetry receivers. That's the same on every single quad. Um, camera wise, I showed you that Spectrum 800 TVL CMOS that comes on the Theory XL. On my um, Lumineer Alpha Stack. Floss 2 5.5 inch. I got a run cam mini, a black one with a 2.3 millimeter lens. It's not quite as good as the 2.1, but it's it's great to fly. It's perfect. You know, you know, splitting hairs there. And then on this one, we have the CMOS 1200 TVL. And on this one, we have an original HS1177, which still works great. And we put the run cam 2.1 millimeter lens on there. We're going to test that out with that and see how we like that as opposed to what's uh, my original lens on this camera is a 2.5 millimeter lens which I seem to have misplaced somewhere oh I know where it is the classic GoPro style lens that right when this came out everybody um, switched and this was the de facto lens I want to say for a good year year and a half and then we just started getting crazy though the camera tech just started getting crazy but I really love this quad because it just it's the fastest thing I have um, I broke one arm not really my fault well everything's your fault but um, I had a battery um, loose battery terminal here it's not like XD60s are wobbling in it and disconnecting so I'm gonna cut this off and put a new one on I wanted to shorten up the XD60 anyways it's kinda of long here if you take a look but yeah um, so it fell from a pretty good distance and, and then uh, I had one other crash after that and one of the arms front arms broke so I ordered two replacement arms um, that's what they come in packs too, which is good. I think that's great. Why get one, you know? So the next time you break an arm, you've got a backup. And I also got a standoff set because one of the standoffs I got in my brand new frame was stripped. Or it stripped. I don't know how it stripped, but it stripped. And so I had to, um, I got a new pack. And now, and that was really cool because it comes with six of them. So I basically have uh, enough. For another quad build now see I got five of these suckers in here and I like these stand oh shit I really like these standoffs X hover makes nice components nice parts except for the one that was stripped <laughs> but I, I'll wait I'm missing one now oh crap crap apples oh we'll find it in a minute so, um, yeah, but this one was interesting when I broke the arm. So I broke the arm and this one right here, uh, a wire, motor wire came off. And when the motor wire came off, it actually snapped 
the motor pad off of the bolt. So you're thinking, well, there goes that ESC, right? You're gonna have to garbage that ESC, buy a brand new one. And rewire all the motors and da, da 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 Nope. I was able to fix it. I was able to fix it um, with a $10 soldering iron that I use for everything. A little bit of solder, a little bit of patience. Um, and it's on there good now. It's on there. It's on there. <laughs> that shit is not popping off. It's on there just as strong as any other motor wire. So I'm really happy. I've done some test hovers. And it sounds really smooth. And I think I'll finish that up with this video. We'll do a little test hover.